Will we ever get to explore the magical world of Witchbrook and live life as Mossport's newest witch? Will we ever conquer mastering spells, being everyone's best friend, and finding true love? Or will this game release remain a mythical dream forever? From the whispers of its spellbinding gameplay to the secrets of its enchanting lore, join me as I take an in-depth look into everything we know about this highly anticipated title. On October 5th, 2016, we got our first sneak peek at Witchbrook, referred to as Spellbound in its early phases. In this early screenshot, we see a conversation between two witches, both sporting cloaks and hats. The dialogue box identifies the witch on the right as Luca. Luca has a surprised expression and appears to be holding a lollipop in their mouth. Luca expresses their admiration for a spell, exclaiming, That fireball spell. I've never seen anything like it. You have to teach it to me. The background scene depicts the interaction, along with a green-haired character who is not dressed as a witch. The three are in a dark and mysterious room with gray brick walls, wooden floors, and a skull perched ominously on a ledge in the corner. A single cobweb dangles from the ceiling, adding to the eerie atmosphere. Eight days later, Chucklefish founder and developer Finn Bryce, who goes by the handle Ty Yuri on social media, posted a YouTube video titled Art Style Demonstration. This gif introduces us to Audria, a witch with long green hair and signature gold hoop earrings. She is in the same eerie room as the previous screen and is now wearing a witch's hat. The dialogue prompt reads, Hello, I'm Audria. This is a showcase of an art style we're experimenting with. What do you think? Audria appears to be engaging in conversation with another character. On October 27, 2016, Ty Yuri tweeted a Giphy Cat link with the caption, this mock-up has me even more spellbound. In this animated gif, we see sunlight streaming through tall windows and what appears to be a library adorned with plants and a skull. Audria is standing at a desk near the entryway. At the same time, the NPC behind the desk, who I assume to be a librarian, scribbles on various tan-toned papers. A yearish later, on August 31st, 2017, Tyuri tweeted a new screen with the caption, Stardew Valley still in testing, no news yet. Thought this sneak peek might tide you over. We've learned a lot of lessons from working with Stardew. In this screen, Audria interacts with two students near wooden stairs. Mid-screen, an elderly woman observes the outdoor seating area on the patio of a cafe named Olives. Towards the edge of the screen, a student stands with a frog on a concrete dock. Another student can be seen standing on the bow of a ship named Cleo. A statue of a person holding a large seashell alongside a sea lion sits inside a water feature. There are two buildings, one displaying art in the window and two art prints outside. The other looks like a post office with a large red post box. The following day, PC Gamer published an article covering the new screenshot and other spellbound content. The report generated significant buzz. On September 11th, PC Gamer journalist Samuel Roberts interviewed Finn Bryce, CEO of Chucklefish, lead designer Rosie Ball, designer Abby Cook Hunt, and artist Adam Riches. During the interview, Bryce said, we're still a little way away from an official announcement. We want to make sure we get the tone and feel of the game just right before we send it out into the world. That said, in typical Chucklefish fashion, we'll be sharing our in-development work from time to time. Along with the interview, two new screenshots of the game were released to the public. The first screenshot depicts a ruined set of stairs and a brook running vertically across the screen. There are four furnaces that may also be kilns. Two witches face one another on the ruined path, raising the question of what they are talking about in this old crumbling place. The second screenshot shows a dimly lit dining hall with a stage and a piano. There are three long dining tables in front of the stage and a longer, regal-looking table to the right of the stage. A buffet table is set up on the right side of the room. We can see Audria speaking with another witch, possibly a student. On October 2, 2017, Chucklefish was interviewed by Roberts once more. The game was said to be in early development, and the formal announcement was described as maybe quite a way off. It was estimated that the project would take three to four years, and around nine or ten people were working on Spellbound. Bryce spoke about the game's progress, saying, We have an entire game world, and in fact, the entire game world, minus a couple of areas, is entirely explorable, and you can move around it. We have our entire cast of characters. We know far too much about all of their personalities. We know all about the surrounding lore now, more or less. The first update of 2018 was released on February 23rd with another early screenshot. Bryce reported, Spellbound is heavily in development, no release date just yet, but we'll be sharing more and more details as time goes by. 
The screen release was utilized as a hero image in the well-known Red Bull interview. In this glimpse into the wilderness, Audrea finds herself surrounded by towering evergreen trees, the gentle beauty of foxgloves, and elegant lupines. A ray of moonlight filters through the trees, adding a touch of magic to the already enchanting scene. The presence of two furnaces, or kilns, and ruins leaves us wondering about the mysterious history that lies within these woods. It isn't until the end of the year in 2018 that we get a follow-up update in the form of a new screenshot released by Ty Yuri on Twitter. A stone building with stained glass windows and vines climbing up its right side takes center stage. Purple and yellow tulips line the front of the building, adding a pop of color. In the foreground sits a serene courtyard with a pond and spiraling trees. A stone archway is decorated with three stained glass windows with the text Solus, Nova, Luna, and Vita etched above. Chucklefish announced their participation in the PC gaming show presented by PC Gamer. In a follow-up tweet, they said they would not be showcasing Witchbrook, but instead focusing on one of the games they published, not develop, at E3 that year. On September 2, 2019, a member of the Chucklefish marketing team that goes by the handle Pilgrim responded to a post by GamePressure.com which reported an unofficial launch date of 2019. Pilgrim states, just to confirm, the game will 100% not be out this December. On Christmas of 2019, Chucklefish surprised the Witchbrook community with a tweet showcasing a tower in a new isometric pixel art style. The building boasts a giant telescope and is blanketed in snow, adding a touch of winter magic to the scene. This announcement sparked speculation that seasons will likely play a role in the game. On April 2, 2020, Chucklefish tweeted three new screenshots. The first screen depicts another isometric snowy environment. A cutaway view of the building reveals a warm, well-lit interior. Inside, a classroom is filled with students engaged in their studies, surrounded by desks, cluttered with reagents, bottles, books, and other supplies. In the center of the room, a witch-sized cauldron sits bubbling over a fire pit. Shelves line the walls, holding a vast collection of books and mysterious liquid mixtures. A pile of trunks rests in the bottom left corner of the building. Audria stands near the entryway, chatting with another witch. Outside, the scene shifts to a snow-covered nightscape with glowing lampposts illuminating the way. A cheerful snowman stands nearby. There is also a stand for brooms that are waiting to be used. A witch can be seen making her way down a path, adding to the winter wonder of the scene. The second screenshot displays a picturesque autumn garden, with raised vegetable beds overflowing with fall produce, surrounded by scattered autumn leaves. A charming shed with gardening equipment leaned up against its walls sits in the top left corner. A squirrel is perched atop a fallen tree, surrounded by a group of wild white mushrooms. The greenhouse is accessed via cobblestone path where a cutaway view offers a glimpse of a witch working at a bench surrounded by lush tropical plants and different mushrooms. The third image depicts a coastal scene with the cafe being the center of attention. An iron archway reading olives leads into the cafe, which is on the lower level of a two-story building with living quarters upstairs. A student studies on the raised patio overlooking the water while enjoying a meal. A red post box and yellow car with a sleeping cat on top are also visible towards the edge of the image. An ice cream guy with a bicycle cart serves a customer in the bottom right corner. On April 2, 2020, Pilgrim confirmed the game would not be released in 2021. In June of 2021, Chucklefish announced on their blog that several games, including Witchbrook, would be coming to you in the near future. They included this gift teaser of a glistening watering hole surrounded by lush forest greenery. An animated squirrel sniffs nearby while a green frog sits peacefully on a lily pad in the water. Wildflowers and mushrooms are scattered throughout. Two months later, a moderator in the Witchbrook subreddit reminded the community, as the Chucklefish team has stated multiple times on their Discord, Witchbrook will not be available before 2023. They're still too early in development. The earliest mention of Witchbrook in 2022 was on May 12th when Chucklefish tweeted that the total number of their upcoming games, including Witchbrook, was now three. Mention of the launch platform for Spellbound first appeared in the Red Bull article, where it was stated that the target platform was PC. However, the success of Stardew Valley on consoles such as Nintendo Switch sparked interest in potentially publishing the game on other platforms. Chucklefish had expressed their admiration for the Switch and hoped to have all significant projects on the platform. Developers have yet to officially confirm the availability of Witchbrook on different platforms, including the Nintendo Switch despite fans creating mock-ups of the game on the system. Over the past six years, the flow of information about Witchbrook has been perceived as inconsistent, leading to frustration and confusion among fans. 
One fan of the game stated that if Witchbrook is treated like one of Chucklefish's bestsellers, Starbound, it would result in a lack of in-game content and infrequent updates, which the fan stated they would not be able to handle again. Another fan expressed their concern about the game's future, stating, I'm constantly worried that this game will get scrapped for some reason, so seeing new updates is always nice. Other fans on the thread shared similar sentiments, leading to more speculation. One well-received comment asked, they paying their employees yet? Some fans were desperately pleading for updates in the Discord channel, anxiously awaiting news about the game. The Witchbrook community started creating comedic memes about the persistent wait as frustration and skepticism grew among fans. In the comments section of these threads, discussions varied from acknowledging the premature announcement to raising questions about allegations of the company's poor treatment of its workers. On January 1st of this year, Ty Yuri assured a fan on the Discord server that the game would not be abandoned. On October 2017, PC Gamer reported that Chucklefish was open to talking about the game because they wanted to be transparent about their creative process, which is often considered secretive in the industry. In 2019, Ty Yuri expressed a change in sentiment, tweeting on April 4th, I wish I felt I could talk more about what I'm trying to do with Witchbrook. It's attempting a bunch of really new and interesting things. I'm concerned about the fallout if the design drastically changes or if some ideas don't work and are omitted. On January 6, 2020, Concerned Ape cleared up a widespread misunderstanding by tweeting that he has no association with the creation of Witchbrook, despite it being mistakenly linked to him. On August 8, 2021, Pilgrim discussed why they are hesitant to share information, stating, We're super reluctant to share details as we want to be 100% sure that it'll be in the endgame. On October 5th and 6th, 2022, Pilgrim explains the reasoning behind the early announcements, as well as their regrets surrounding it. So the reason it was announced was because they initially wanted the dev cycle to be more transparent in the same way Starbound was. But then they switched tracks and went off to make Wargroove. In the meantime, the team shifted and there was no longer a consensus that sharing before things were absolutely 100% in the game was comfortable with everybody, so that's why it's like this. We do have some regrets announcing so early, and I'm very empathetic of how frustrating that can be for fans, but our intentions were to be open with the development at the time. Things changed and we didn't want to do that this time around. It's a little scary to share everything with everyone, even stuff that may or may not be 100% or get cut or be unfinished. Negative controversy can impact the development process of an indie game, drawing attention away from the game's development and instead focusing on resolutions. I won't be going into specifics to stay on topic, but details are available online for anyone who wants to learn more about the company's past controversy. In 2019, serious accusations emerged regarding the alleged mistreatment of volunteers who worked on Starbound between 2013 and 2016. The claims were corroborated by former volunteers and employees. On August 26, 2019, Ty Yuri tweeted, It's got to the point now that when I see mostly negative or worse on Steam, I assume the game is being review bombed. It was around this time that the controversy started coming to light. Ty Yuri stopped posting updates about the development of Witchbrook, signaling the impact it had on the transparency of the development process. Days later, Chucklefish made a statement regarding the allegations. You can pause here to read, but in short, they express sadness over the allegations regarding the development of Starbound and invite those with concerns to speak directly with Chucklefish. They also declare the company has since grown into a studio focused on fair work practices. Screen Rant commented on the statement saying, Obviously, this is a messy situation where onlookers don't have all of the information available to them and must instead develop an opinion based on what both sides are telling them. On November 13th, 2019, the official Wargroove Twitter account faced backlash for posting images of white voice actors alongside BIPOC characters they were portraying. The tweet was appropriately met with criticism for being poorly thought out and insensitive. Three weeks later, Wargroove official responded to their original post tweeting a statement. The statement thanks the public for their feedback and acknowledges the unconscious bias in the casting process. The company took steps to prevent this by using an external team and conducting blind auditions. They apologized for causing harm by posting photos of voice actors beside characters of color without acknowledging representation issues in the industry. They vowed to be more sensitive in future casting decisions. Despite the challenges, the gaming community embraced the game, evident in the form of interactive art events, the creation of Easter eggs, and entertaining publications from Chucklefish, predominantly observed on the Discord platform. 
On the Discord server, Pilgrim sparked inspiration and fan engagement on October 1st, 2019 with the announcement of a Witchbrook-themed Inktober prompt list. The exciting news was tweeted a few days later on the 4th. Inktober brought even more exciting moments when the artists of Witchbrook participated in the event, sharing their illuminating illustrations with the community. Chucklefish injected intrigue into the landscape by offering a glimpse of the Witchbrook Oracle, penned by the beloved journalist Dusty Inkwell of Mossport fame. In early 2022, aspiring students could sign up to receive their copy of the inaugural issue, which finally arrived at the doorstep of the town's resident witches on October 28, 2021. The debut issue of the Witchbrook Oracle features comprehensive coverage of the annual pumpkin growing competition, providing an in-depth look at the community of Mossport's participation in the event. The issue includes advertisements from three local businesses, including Ice Guys, The Swine and Spirits, and Wildflower, the town's premier plant shop. Readers also have the unique chance to seek advice directly from Dusty Inkwell himself. Upon revealing the coastal town scene in early April, the Discord community zeroed in on a particular character situated in the bottom right corner of the image. This charming ice cream vendor could be seen cheerfully serving customers from his bicycle cart. Naturally, questions about dating the now popular ice cream guy arose. Pilgrim had to disappointingly inform the community that he would not be a dateable character. Despite this, ice cream guy garnered a devoted following and became a beloved figure on the server. The ad for Ice Guys in the first issue of the Oracle confirmed this character would be officially named Guy, in tribute to the community's dedicated support for the project. The following month, a fan on the Discord server dubbed the menacing pumpkin from the garden screen, Gordon. Once again, this moniker was quickly embraced by the community. In the first issue of the Oracle, it was officially confirmed that the infamous Gord would be known as Gordon. On October 8, 2019, an unassuming member of the Discord server, Popo, began offering prayers for a speedy Witchbrook launch. The prayer was prefaced with Day One, implying more prayers would come in the future. As time went by, Popo remained dedicated to their commitment to pray for the development team. The community came to depend on Popo's daily presence. As the 100th prayer approached, the channel continued to support Popo. Community admin Alfie announced an unofficial art event in honor of Popo's 100th prayer. Alfie continued to organize events mostly every 100 prayers. These events served as an opportunity to come together and celebrate Popo's dedication to promoting positivity and hope for the development of Witchbrook. The prompts involved various creative elements, keeping the events exciting and was a wholesome distraction amidst the chaos. Most of the submissions can be viewed on the Chucklefish Discord server, accessible through pinned posts in the Witchbrook channel. For the 500th prayer, Popo created this incredibly complex pixel art of the Witchbrook logo. The link can be found in the Discord server and it honestly gave me goosebumps to watch. Pilgrim informed the Discord group that Popo's contributions would likely be honored in some way in the final game. Lastly, we learned that the development team had Witchbrook on their minds while working on Wargroove as evidenced by a Discord member's observation. The screenshot shows the emblem of the Witchbrook Windflower resting on what looks to be the ground. In 2017, the source of inspiration for the game was revealed by its creators when Abby Cook Hunt told PC Gamer, our inspiration for the game world and art comes from a lot of places. People have picked up on the influence of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter, but some of our biggest inspirations have been things like Studio Ghibli's rendition of Kiki's Delivery Service, Garth Nix's Old Kingdom series, and Terry Pratchett's Tiffany Atching books. Ghibli's work plays a particular role in the visuals we're working to create for the game. The environments of Studio Ghibli's films are so captivating and charming. We want our players to enjoy this world in that same way. She stated, contrary to popular belief, we were well into development before a Little Witch Academia appeared on our radar. Bryce told PC Gamer, the most obvious ones are Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley. There's a lot we've learned from that. I think the biggest thing we've learned from Stardew Valley is that there's an inherent value in having a game world that's just charming to be in. More inspiration can be seen in the concept drawover by Witchbrook artist Jade Evans. Reference photos describe essential elements for each structure, including window frames, brick patterns, substrate texture, doors, trees, plants, and other architectural aspects. Finn Bryce worked on Terraria as a sprite artist until around early 2012. Shortly after his departure, he announced his new project, Starbound, which made its debut in 2016. 
2016 was the same year Chucklefish offered to help Eric Barone, aka Concerned Ape, publish the game Stardew Valley. They also provided critical feedback and testing. In 2018, Concerned Ape decided to move to self-publishing. Chucklefish remained responsible for publishing to Nintendo Switch and mobile platforms. Concerned Ape commented, I think self-publishing is the dream of most indie developers, and I'm happy to be in a place where that's possible. Chucklefish responded to this news publicly, saying, We are proud to be a part of the Stardew Valley story and wish Concerned Ape every success with his new self-publishing venture. We will carry on working closely together and will be continuing to publish the versions of Stardew Valley for Nintendo Switch and mobile. On February 23, 2019, a Reddit user posted a GitHub link to one of A.N. Zeratol's repositories called Haley on R Programming. Discussion ensued about the switch from the previous game development engine, Rust. A.M. Zeratol, real-world name Rodrigo Braz Montiero, CTO of Chucklefish, chimed in, confirming that Witchbrook Development had switched to a different game development engine called Haley. He said, It just didn't make much sense for a small company to be developing two engines in parallel, instead of reusing existing code and knowledge. A few days later, the post was shared on R Rust with the title, Chucklefish is no longer using Rust for Witchbrook. Former lead programmer Cryan commented on the post, stating he left Chucklefish amicably in mid-2018. Cryan's absence as the only Rust programmer provided the opportunity to switch to Haley, which has more support for game development. Haley was built by A.M. Zeratel himself. As such, there has been a lot of customization built on top of it, specifically for Witchbrook, as Tyuri mentioned on Discord in October 2021. On September 11th, 2017, we first heard what gameplay might look like through an interview with PC Gamer, in which Bryce stated, There are many different kinds of magic slash crafting slash potion making slash farming systems in this game, and each of those needs to be rewarding and satisfying in their own right. Expect to have a lot to do in the final game, but to progress regardless of the activity. The following month, PC Gamer reported that the combat would draw inspiration from 2D Zelda games. Bryce went on to discuss the dating elements of the game, stating, Dates can go wrong. Things can go wrong. It's more about that high school experience. You might get a few hard knocks. He continued, You're just another awkward teenager at a school of awkward teenagers. In early 2018, we learned more about potential gameplay through the Red Bull article in which Bryce explained, Players should expect to build up their magical proficiency by undertaking school projects. This might have them growing magical crops and creatures in herbology or taking on the Denzians of the forest in elemental magic. School life is just as important as magic, however, a lot of time will be spent meeting and befriending the varied cast of characters, taking on quests, awkward attempts at dating, and a host of side activities. We're expecting players to be a little shocked the first time they get dumped. We're attempting to portray a game world in which the characters have their own motivations and desires, we want the player to feel as if they're a part of an autonomous world rather than a world that revolves around their desires. The game is jam-packed with little surprises and delights at every turn. We want to ensure the experience is wonderfully relaxing and charming moment to moment. Players will also be able to unlock and combine elements to activate new spells that they can take into the game's forest dungeon where all sorts of rewards await. It's going to be a game with lots of variety and lots to explore and master. Like Stardew, we want to be a game you can come back to time and time again, so we certainly see it as offering a similar length of playtime. Tai Yuri took to Twitter to discuss the journaling aspects of the game, stating, I'm considering having Witchbrook start with a splash screen, notebook, and pencil recommended. When you learn magic rituals, spells, and so on, you'll be expected to take notes, draw diagrams, record recipes, the idea being that by the end of the year of your stay at magic school, you'll have a real-life witch's tome you created whilst playing the game. Does this sound appealing to you? Several days later, Tiger tweets, For context, the magic system I'm exploring for Witchbrook at the moment is very witchy in nature. We're not equipping spells and mashing buttons to shoot fireballs. You're carrying out careful rituals and brewing potions with precise recipes. Producing magic is a project. In a tweet on June of the same year, Tayuri discussed city management. The concept we're experimenting with at the moment involves attending witch school to learn magic and using that magic to assist in foraging, crafting, and somewhat passively maintaining a small town. You're the town witch, and that's what witches do. Improving the town unlocks new lessons and school upgrades, which in turn improves your ability to forge materials, build houses, and attract a cast of villagers. Managing villagers and their requests become a major part of the process. As you support them, you'll see them improve their living situations, 
form friendships, date, and see their stories progress. On top of this main back and forth, I'm expecting a lot of subsystems like potion making, fishing, collecting, rituals, events, and so on, many of which will be magical. I'd also want the player to aim for graduation. This is just one concept we're exploring, so none of this is a promise for what the game will look like. From October 2019 to September 2020, Pilgrim provided insight into gameplay through updates on the Discord server. These updates included information about gender-neutral character options, dispelling conspiracy theories about a shared universe with Stardew Valley, confirmation that the game will feature bathrooms, the treatment of which as a gender-neutral term, the absence of mining and animal agriculture, the possibility of queer relationships, and uncertainty regarding the game's rating. In 2022, Tyuri briefly discussed quest mechanics, saying, I'm hoping to have something that contains a huge list of tasks from the get-go, and let players decide which to do, whilst teachers set you more mandatory tasks. The major difference versus the norm being that you don't have to hunt down and trigger side quests. Instead, you simply choose one you like the sound of. He also confirmed they're actively working on multiplayer. In May of 2022, game programmer Grumpy Lion discusses the cooking system, stating, our cooking system will be taking another direction, something in the direction of overcooked, but not as stressful, taking ingredients, mixing them together in a bowl, and then putting that bowl on a stove, etc., since we're trying to avoid UI-based mini-games. In June, Pilgrim talks about how herbalism will be approached in the game, and the steps they've taken to make the mechanics as true to life as possible, saying, so far it's real plants on their own. I think once the magical lore starts being written, we'll see more magical plants and such. Our writer's desk is full of herby, witchy, esoteric books, so no doubt there will be some practical elements borrowed from real-life applications. A few days later, the official Witchbrook officially announced the addition of multiplayer to the game. We've been quietly working out how to achieve a fun gameplay experience for more than one player, and we'll share more details about how this will work in the future. In January 2023, Pilgrim responded to a query about the end game time and confirmed that Witchbrook would not adopt real-time mechanics. On October 8, 2019, Tyuri tweeted the Witchbrook game design document. This document remained public and was periodically updated, with the last update, to my knowledge, being October 28, 2021. It has since been made private. The latest version of the document opens with a disclaimer that the information in the document is no longer current and should not be used to predict features or gameplay in the final game. As such, I'm going to try to keep my coverage of this document brief. A game design document is a comprehensive guide that outlines a video game's vision, design, and development plans. It serves as a blueprint for the game's creation, covers various aspects, and helps ensure all stakeholders are on the same page. They are typically kept from the public. As mentioned earlier, inspiration for the game partially came from Stardew Valley. That said, there are some mechanics of the game mentioned that a player will be well-adjusted to if they've played Stardew Valley. Those mechanics include day and night cycles, weather, the calendar system, including changing seasons, relationships and dating, fishing, foraging, artifact hunting, gardening, receiving mail, crafting, the library, building expansion, the forest, beaches, tool upgrades, and menu navigation to an extent. Students will need to work towards graduating from school to earn their witching permit. There is also a lunar cycle that may affect various interactions in the game. It is mentioned that events can be an opportunity to redecorate parts of the school grounds. NPCs will be able to initiate conversations. If ignored, it can result in a loss of social points with that character. Targeting mode opens up an interaction UI, allowing the player to interact with the entity in a large variety of ways. Targeting mode is meant to be used whenever possible to approach mundane situations magically. This image was included to illustrate how the targeting mechanic might work. In this example, we see early iterations of the UI in targeting mode. Audria is on the concrete dock with a fishing pole, and it looks like she's made a belt buckle out of the ominous skull from the previous screens. Players start with a wand. Spells are taught by completing main quests. The potions lab has a cauldron and distillery for ingredients. Wizard dueling is available if you join the dueling club. However, combat and danger are not the focus of this mechanic. You can collect stamps by peeling them off the postcards you receive from family members and placing them in your grimoire. You can take astrology courses in the astrology tower. There will be an opportunity to obtain a familiar. You'll get your own dorm room. The insect village allows you to interact with small creatures, but you must learn the shrink spell before accessing it. There is a prom and a school newspaper, and that's about it. I believe this image of the astronomy tower without snow was originally from an earlier iteration of the game design document, so I'm going to include it here. 
In one of the articles by PC Gamer, Adam Rich has stated, Coming straight off Starbound and before we'd settled on the name Wargroove, we initially called that project Warbound. It only made sense to complete the rule of threes and refer to this game as Spellbound. It started off as a joke, but it's something that seems to have stuck. The Red Bull article wrote, Chucklefish's willingness to help other studios has paid off handsomely. As Stardew Valley's success has ensured their next in-house project, Spellbound, now named Witchbrook, has plenty of pre-release attention. Spellbound is an idea several people at Chucklefish had been kicking around for a long time, Bryce stated in the article. Between projects, every member of staff at Chucklefish is given the opportunity to pitch a game, and Spellbound was one of the big pitches. The team fell in love with the concept right away, and here we are. On March 14, 2018, Taiyuri tweeted the first mention of Spellbound being renamed to Witchbrook and included this teaser image. In this image, a character stands at a large steaming cauldron in front of a classroom. Herbs hang to dry near a window, and jars filled with magical concoctions rest on tall shelves. There are five workstations, and each student has their own mini cauldron. The next day, Chucklefish announced that the Witchbrook subreddit and Discord channel were now available to fans. At the end of October 2018, it was observed that Witchbrook was now listed on the Chucklefish website with the label TBA. At some point in 2018, this image was released, but appears to have been redacted. I wasn't able to find the official source of this image, but it was shared in the Discord server sometime in 2019. On January 3, 2019, a Reddit user noticed that the Witchbrook website was labeled as coming soon on the Chucklefish website. On June 21st of the same year, Taiyuri tweeted, had some big breakthroughs on the Witchbrook design. The game has been in early stages for quite a while, as we've not felt right about its direction, but I'm finally somewhere that has me hyped. Hearing what everyone wanted from this type of game really helped. After many questions about beta testing, in April of 2022, Pilgrim responded that it was probably not going to happen. Witchbrook was finally available to wishlist on Steam as of June 1st, 2022. The Steam page featured four new, never-before-seen screens. On the first screen, we got an incredible evening view of the town and its residents. Dobro's Donut Shop has a glowing fluorescent sign giving off a warm and inviting vibe. We can see townies enjoying a sweet pastry outside the shop as another customer has an internal debate about the sugary option under a red and white striped awning. Next door is a coffee shop named Caffiana, a seemingly popular spot judging by how many patrons there are in this scene. Twinkle lights and green foliage drape the building, blending perfectly with its lush green exterior walls. A cheese store sits next door, but the name is cropped. Out front, we can see a bike and flying lane, with a witch flying by on their broomstick. Groups of NPCs gather in the courtyard, enjoying the evening air. The next screen is a stunning autumnal scene that depicts a cobblestone bridge over a glistening brook. A charming duck family floats on the water below the bridge. An NPC sits on a bench near the bank of water, quietly reading with a camera resting next to her. On the bridge stands a witch with her broom idly floating nearby as she holds her camera up to get a photo. In the third scene, we see a cutaway view of a bakery filled with patrons. The shop seating area has a casual vibe and is filled with indoor plants. A familiar yellow car moves along the bottom of the screen. The trees appear to have pink blossoms that blow around in the wind. To the left is an outdoor seating area with a sign that says olives near the entryway. The fourth scene shows a spacious outdoor area of a plant shop with customers browsing the leafy wares. There are a lot of more minor details in this shot, including a robin's nest with eggs, a garden gnome, a calico cat resting on a pillar, and a goose hiding in the flower bed. Several days later, Grumpy Lion supplied Discord with the very first GIF of what actual gameplay might look like. This GIF shows the in-game decorating mechanics as a player character places the table in a small cottage-like room. The second GIF shows a witch placing a teddy bear on a table. We even get a screenshot of four teddy bears resting on the mantle of a fireplace, illustrating how customizable room design has the potential to be. Throughout 2019 and 2021, we got several updates in the Witchbrook Discord channel about the game's development process. Most of the time, updates were brief, letting us know that it's being worked on. In January and June of 2021, Pilgrim confirmed that Witchbrook had been worked on 100% by a full team of nine. One year later, Taiyuri dropped a huge development announcement on Discord saying, To share a little more about Witchbrook's design, anything and everything here could change. I want to be able to speak openly about what we're up to, but anything I say isn't a promise, just an insight into our current plans and work. Most of the updates mentioned were similar to the game design document with a few exceptions. 
Your goal is to make it through three school grades and become a certified witch. To do that, at the start of each grade, you're set a number of bespoke tasks to complete, which earns you badges. You might be tasked with taking a photograph of something rare and magical or required to produce a particularly difficult potion. Completing all of these grade badges will gain you some rewards and move you to the next grade. Completing and redeeming badges grants you new magical abilities that assist you with the activities you take part in around the world. There are also optional badges to earn. These provide many more tasks to complete, but are required to complete the school grade. Completing every single task will be the end game, though, and earn you the witch equivalent of a PhD. Finally, on January 24, 2023, Tai Yuri ensured the Discord channel that the game was chugging along in development. At some point in 2019, Chucklefish officially became a No Crunch studio. Crunch, as it's called in the game development world, involves consistently working overtime, especially towards the end of development, to meet unrealistic deadlines. The overtime work is often unpaid. Oh my god, every day feels like I've died and gone to hell. I'm sorry? He's a safe list, so mm -hmm. it's good. Oh, fun. The Chucklefish studio also switched to a four-day work week, a practice that is not very common. Starting at the end of September 2018, Chucklefish began actively looking to hire people to work on Witchbrook. On April 10th, 2019, they announced they had hired Steph Kask as a pixel artist. Steph eventually became the lead artist in July 2020. The announcement of artist Tenchi's hire was on October 11th, 2019. Another hiring call went out on December 8th, 2021, looking for a gameplay programmer on April 20th, 2022, Chucklefish announced their new Witchbrook programmer, Grumpy Lion, who came from Germany to help with the game. In 2022, a hiring call was tweeted for a programmer and pixel artist. This year, on January 31st, it was announced that Ref was hired as a pixel artist. Ref relocated to London from Argentina. Chucklefish has been committed to representing marginalized communities more effectively throughout development. In their responses to the controversy around topics of race, they have taken accountability and vowed to do better. They have sought to diversify their team by seeking BIPOC hires worldwide, offering free training to Black developers in 2020. In the teaser screens, we can see how far the representation extends based on the designs of NPCs. With the launch of Hogwarts Legacy, in response to the stance held by J.K. Rowling, they've stopped referencing the books as an inspiration and made sure the Discord server was aware there would be zero tolerance for discussion entertaining Rowling's viewpoints. Game designers also work towards offering non-binary options and have included queer relationships in the game. Chucklefish has stated that they will reference territory based on Steam's wishlist data. A handful of people have already asked for specific languages in the Steam community. They will more than likely be localizing in Spanish. Everything in this section is pure speculation and should not be taken seriously. Back in 2020, Pilgrim discussed AAA zoning and console cycles. She mentioned indie games don't generally come out in November or December since so many AAA games are launched during that time. Indie games can get lost in the shuffle. She also said, I think we'll have a new console cycle by the time we're ready to release. Console cycles happen every five years. The last console cycle was in November of 2020 with the new Xbox and PlayStation systems. The next console cycle won't be until 2025, so hopefully she was referring to the 2020 console cycle. According to Steam, Wild Frost is set to come out during Q1 of 2023, leaving Locomotive and Witchbrook as the only two titles Chucklefish is actively working on. Locomotive is confirmed for some time in 2023, and it was already showcased at Adventure X in London. It appears to be a smaller project with fewer people working on it, and is listed as a game they are publishing, not developing. Witchbrook is unlikely to launch in Q4 of 2023 due to AAA zoning. I speculate that Witchbrook will not be available in Q1 or Q2. If it were to come out this year, Q3 would make the most sense because of A, cozy season, and B, we'd have the game in hand for Halloween. If it doesn't come out during Q3, I suspect it won't be out until sometime in 2024. Again, this is all speculation, and we currently have no idea when the game will be available. 
On October 5th, 2022, PC Gamer journalist Russell Anderson speculated in an article that, despite its lengthy time in development, we don't have a release date just yet for Witchbrook and can probably expect it in 2023 at the earliest. This was the only time I've seen the date 2023 mentioned in any of my research, so I'm not sure where Anderson drew this speculation from. On December 9th, 2022, moderator Simone stated, We do know it won't be this or next year, in response to someone asking for an update. This was the first time hearing that the game would not be released in 2023. However, I have yet to see a developer state this directly. In summary, this video has covered the challenges and possibilities surrounding developing a highly anticipated game that may have been announced too soon. We explored fan frustration with launch date confusion, the perceived lack of information from developers, and controversy surrounding the company. We also discussed some of the wholesome things that have come from the wait, such as community art events, Easter eggs inspired by Discord members, and the best cheerleader a community in waiting could ask for. We looked at the inspiration behind the game, some of Chucklefish's previous works, and the new game engine being used by programmers. We reviewed early gameplay mentions, the game design document, and development updates from the past six years. Lastly, we talked about the solutions Chucklefish is implementing to provide a healthy work environment, such as a no-crunch policy and hiring calls for new developers to ensure the game gets completed, as well as efforts to improve the representation of marginalized communities and language localization. Please let me know if I have overlooked or inaccurately portrayed any information. As an outsider to the community, my perspective is solely based on research, and there may have been gaps in my understanding. You can find Witchbrook updates on the official Twitter, Discord server, and subreddit. I will also be posting updates on my Twitter and here on YouTube, so please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you've made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you sticking around. Thank you so much for watching, and happy gaming, friends. Oh,